In a few months, there'll be houses here. The concrete foundation will be sturdy and strong. Hey, it's Joel. This is my very first 3D printed house, and I'm sure you have questions, as did I, but I've also got some answers. Come on inside. I'm at Woodbury University, and this house was built by their School of Architecture for the 2023 U.S. Department of Energy Solar Decathlon Build Challenge. My experience with housing is definitely not 3D printed. Well, until now, I know how to build a traditional house. I've built stick-built houses. I've remodeled kitchens. I've framed things. I've built roofs, and I've plumbed things, and I've ran electricity. And so being in a 3D printed house really makes me think because I have to figure out how they go about putting traditional things such as electricity and plumbing within an additive created shell. I'm excited to tell you about it because I learned the why of this house, I learned the how of this house, and I also learned how much it costs, which I know you're curious about. You'll tell me when you feel comfortable. So why don't we get started? First thing I want to address is the how, and I really had some questions around how. How is this made? How is electricity run? How is plumbing run? How is this carbon friendly? And I got all the answers to it. This is printed in concrete, as you would imagine. Emergent was the construction company, and they utilized a cobod machine to print these walls. The walls go up nine foot, three and a quarter inches tall, and each layer, the layer height of this house is an inch and a half. It's just funny when we talk about layer heights and it's a full inch and a half. When they're made, these walls are not solid. There's this part of the wall and then there's the outer part of the wall and it's hollow on the inside. So how do they run electricity? It's brilliant how they do this. Like I said, it's hollow when it's first made. And up top, you can see typical conduit running the wire to various places. But up there, you can see a junction box and that is connected to conduit that comes down to an outlet down by my legs. And then they backfill the entire wall with more concrete. So rather than having to drill through concrete in order to place conduit, the conduit itself is placed and then the concrete is backfilled. That is freaking awesome! When talking about power, it has to be stored somewhere. The power used here is generated by those solar panels up above on the roof and it's stored right here. This was donated by the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, and this is battery storage. When we talk about solar panel, for example, my house, solar comes in and it's fed back to the grid and we get credits, and then we power the house on the grid. That is an option here, but to be a self-sustaining dwelling, you do need to store the power that comes in from the solar panels, and then using technology, get it out to all the outlets. And that's what this is here. This is battery storage. Now, not all battery storage for dwellings has to be a big mobile cart from the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. You can get yourself a Tesla Powerwall or any other options, but you know what? LA donated this, so they're cool. I did learn that the concrete is a special mix. This is a student project, so the house is going through various experiments, as you would think students would be doing at a university. And I was told that this mixture has a little bit more fly ash in it because that makes it more carbon friendly. And speaking about electricity, I wanted to show you the breaker panel because you know most homes have one of these, my home, your home, they all have them. And so this is a house and it has a breaker panel. But Unlike most homes, but some more homes are coming online with this, it has a solar panel system. So these are the breakers for the solar panels. Behind this is the tankless water heater, which is really handy to have. And then right behind me is a gray water system. We can't talk gray water without talking about a bathroom. And yes, of course, a 3D printed house has a bathroom. Here's the sink and the toilet. It's a part of the gray water system. If you need to wash your clothes, you can do that right here. If you need to wash your hair and your giblets, there's a shower system and Fred, get in there. Fred Flintstone approved toilet paper. Oh. <laughs> When we talk about 3D printed houses, we need to address the roof. It's a wooden roof. And we actually talked to our friend at Emergent and it makes a lot of sense. They built the walls. 
They built the walls nine feet, three and a quarter inches tall. Additive manufacturing, as you know, is great for stacking things vertically. But once we have to go at some sort of angle like that, it can be a bit difficult. And so when building a house, that difficulty becomes exponential because we're talking about inch and a half concrete layers. So what we do here is we utilize traditional methods and we do a stick built roof. And it works great because it marries up to the concrete perfectly. It holds the solar panels just fine and it keeps you dry if there's ever any inclement weather. Now we should talk about the why of this house. Why is it being built? What is its purpose? It really lends itself to transitional housing. And if you think about it, transitional housing are small dwellings for people that are on the edge of homelessness who can then transition into a house to get on their feet and then transition out of the house. You need smaller dwellings that are cost efficient and can be built really quickly. And that's what this house does. It uses additive manufacturing to build a dwelling very, very quickly and then let someone move in. Now we need to talk about the price. Cost is always an issue when we talk about any sort of dwelling that you're building an additive is no different than that. So the cost of this house, this one right here is $250,000. Before you go ooh and ah, remember this is a student built house and it's full of experiments and ways to try to mitigate carbon within the dwelling itself. And so 250,000 is for this house. The aim and goal is to get this to $150,000, which I think is a fantastic goal. Bringing affordable transitional housing down in cost can only benefit us as humans and help more people get on their feet. And it's exciting to think about. And I love talking about 3D printed houses, which I hope you enjoyed as well. If you want to see more, let me know down in the comments. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. 3D print all the things, and as always, high five.